am just with Exit Coaching. Okay, so today, let's dive in. We're stalling. Uh, today, we are talking about the difference between obstacles and opportunity, right? Okay. Really, that uh, that mindset that uh, that happens. You know, you were talking about getting swag. We should get some uh, multiple angles set up because yeah. all people can see is this little furry head next to you and they're not quite sure what he's doing. He's drinking coffee. That's my son! Because what better way to make a two-year-old stop crying from poor choices than to caffeinate him? Right mm. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. You're a truth teller. That's how I've been dealing with life. Okay. So today we are talking obstacles versus opportunities. And I'm not even, if I'm honest, uh, entirely sure what, what prompted this. Uh, like I made a video on it on uh, Instagram, what, Thursday? Get your foot off my camera. Get your foot off my camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We live Make in a shake. Yeah, we're not, not an earthquake. Uh, we did survive one of those a couple of weeks ago, but uh, <laughs> not Not one, an earthquake. Not when that's it's a two-year-old. It's a Beckett quake. Uh, okay, so obstacles versus opportunities. I'm not sure what uh, ultimately really really prompted this. I'm not sure what made the uh, what made this come to mind, other than here's maybe a couple of, of thoughts on it. Um... First, it seems like a lot of the the coaching conversations I've I've had recently. Like, I mean, I, I suppose that's always ultimately really the theme of coaching, right? Like, in in your life, you will encounter something, and if you let it defeat you, it becomes an obstacle. And if you have this uh, growth mindset that believes that you can get through it, maybe it becomes an opportunity. So maybe that's always kind of uh, a sub theme of coaching, um, but. Uh, I'm sure it's paired with a uh, couple of uh, some other recent thoughts for me. Uh, one, I just actually this morning on the way up the hill uh, finished uh, Angela Duckworth's book, Grit, okay. and talking about how you overcome and experience that growth. Phenomenal book. So I, I read it a couple of years ago in Denver, listened to the audiobook here over the last week. Uh, so we might dive some into that. But I, I think like the third realization for me, um, this even goes back a couple of months. Uh, maybe you can shed some light on as an outside person. Uh, like I remember sitting somewhere here in this room <laughs> and like it was a couple of weeks before my thesis defense mm -hmm. and like just lamenting that this was by far the hardest thing I'd, I'd ever done in my life, right? right like yeah. the thesis project, the, 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 the doctoral thesis component was ridiculously hard. Right. And it took me, what, two years to write the paper? Yeah. Um, how many hundreds of hours was I reading and writing and researching and editing and deleting and, and missing out on and missing out on family time? And yeah. I don't know how many trips you guys took to go see grandparents or great grandparents or cousins and yeah. I stayed home and worked, mm -hmm. right? And so then like all of a sudden just a couple of weeks before thesis defense, just like I'm not sure I want to complete this. Like this is really hard work. Yeah. Um and you are kind of a pessimistic person. Yeah, maybe you, by nature. By nature I, you do I, not I struggle with, you do not with. automatically jump to the best conclusion. Well, okay, so, so maybe that's an interesting point. Am I, I, maybe I'm a pessimist, right? Like, I'll, I'll defer that till I, I share my thought. Defer. Um, or, and, and I mean this honestly, is, I think I, you could also argue that I'm very naturally geared towards, like, seeing what else has to be done. Right, so maybe it's not necessarily pessimism, like, Oh, this is going to be terrible. Mm. But I mean, even like yesterday, I finished working at what six thirty, seven o'clock last night, and like, but here's still all of the things that I could work on today, right? It's not necessarily yeah. uh, it wasn't necessarily because I wanted to be negative. I'm also just keenly aware of like your glass half empty, like it's still well, empty. But that's it's not done. Sure, sure, but anyway, maybe that's an interesting. <laughs> If I, if I knew, yeah, well, sure, I, if you want to go into nuance. If I knew at all what I was doing, we'd probably create a poll like, is that pessimism, right? Because we'll I don't necessarily... We'll say you're on the spectrum for pessimism. <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm pessimist spectrum yeah. positive. Um, like, it's not necessarily that I want to be negative. It's also that I'm keenly aware of, like, the job's not done. Yeah. And so maybe that sounds overly negative, but I also know that, like, oh, I should do this and this and this and this today. 
Whereas, like, if I've got a pile of dishes to do and I, like, turn the water on, I'm like, dang, look at you, Elise. You turned the water on. <laughs> Good girl. You. This is going to be a winning day. Uh, okay. So, obstacles versus opportunities. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go back to doctoral school because I think that's, like... And then I also realized somewhere along the way that, I mean, quite literally, like, I've made it through every other obstacle that life has had to throw at me up to that point, right? It's not like I'm 399 wins and one loss. Like, right. I have always, right. to some degree, been able to overcome. Maybe it wasn't my preferred outcome or was it right. what I had planned on outcoming, but life up to this point in my life has not defeated me. Right. Because in some way, I've always been able to adapt or change course. Right. So there was some sort of like, well, then I bet I can make it through this too. Like we were created to be overcomers. Overcomers, right. You know, and I, and I remember in, in this conversation saying like, gosh, this is so hard and I just want to quit. But I also know that like this is by far and away the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But if I quit this, I really give my kids to, I give my kids the option of quitting anything they want to. Right. Because they could always say, well, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. I should quit it. You know, and then you come up to a new hardest thing. Yeah. And you want to quit, like, it sets the precedent. Well, it's just not, it's not optimism for optimism's sake. Right. It's, it's kind of like, I mean, God has shown his presence in your life for so long. And you have yeah. been taken care of and you've, and you've overcome your obstacles of school and, and whatever you want to put it, right. and you have to have the the wisdom toddlerhood to, four times to look to, to the wisdom to look back and say, God is faithful. Yeah. Through everything, I I have no reason to not believe it will right now. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So if you're watching this live, leave us a leave us a comment. Let us know what it is you think or anything that we want to talk about. But you you were preparing something, correct? You had a, what was your obstacle versus opportunity that you oh, were thinking about? Oh, okay, okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm currently a stay-at-home mom, and I, um, I still like to invest in myself and to um, work on the, the things that I uh, enjoy, but, but to, to an end that, like, you know, when the kids get out of the house, I don't want to be like, oh, here's my, I, I don't want to be stunt, I, I don't want to stunt myself. So I want to make sure that I am feeding, um, feeding my soul, feeding my, my mind. So, so I don't, I mean, like I don't want Alzheimer's, you know? So that yeah. means like taking care of my brain and, and then, but my, like the other side is like my obstacles are, Oh, well you should be, you should be, um, going and playing with the kids right now, or you should be going doing the dishes. You should be cleaning up this room or organizing this or doing this. Like there is an endless task attached to, being at home and being a mom and being a wife, there's obstacles. That, and, and and I'm the pessimist here. No, nice. so, <laughs> so like my obstacles are yeah. just yeah. like my tasks around me, and um, like how do I make those? How do I make those like opportunities out of out of those? Yeah, and that's I mean that's kind of a weird one. But finding finding time throughout the day. Yeah. To encourage your own self growth yeah. and awareness. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And and I think that's I mean, that works because if we're talking obstacles versus opportunities, that's I mean, I, I think that fits in really well, right? Mm -hmm. I've got kids at home, it's summertime, our schedule's crazy. That makes it sound a whole bunch like obstacles. Yeah. Or maybe I need to like one option is maybe I need to be more disciplined and wake up early or go to bed on time. Mm -hmm. right. So I have the opportunity Certainly. to get up early. Or, like, I, I think you can also start to say, but if I always try to do self-growth, first of all, when other people aren't around, uh, I'm going to be limited. Two, especially if it's my kids, like, maybe the opportunity is for you to practice self-growth around your kids so that they get to see that that actually matters as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that, that's why I think it's great that like, that you go for a run and do it when the kids are awake. They're used to seeing me go to the gym. But sometimes, you know, we put the kids to bed and then you sneak off to the gym at night and they're like, well, does, does mom ever work out? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, but they never see it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the more that you can actually, like, I don't care that it's 5 o'clock, dinner's going, it'll be ready in half an hour, I'm going for a run. Right. Like, kids actually see that that matters. Like, maybe that's 
I mean, just that act of declaration mm -hmm. in itself mm -hmm. transforms that obstacle into an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kids are around. Yeah, they, they, they could need you, but they won't have you if you don't take care of yourself. And the opportunity that you have right now is 30 minutes in front of a movie distracts them just long enough for you to go get in a quick five miles. Ooh, couldn't get five miles in 30 minutes. Oh, three miles. Sorry, I was thinking of 5K. Three miles. Oh, you yeah. Can do, well, oh. you can do five miles in I should have just left it at that. Yeah. You think that, you're, that your wife is super fast. She's super fast. I'm amazing. But yeah, I, I see what you're. I see what you're I'm saying. Married to E. Sane Bolt. <laughs> I I I I'll uh, I'll uh, give I you. I said I said E, not in. I'll give you some for credit. I'll uh, <laughs> for trying. Did not say insane bolt. <laughs> Did I? Stop. Okay, <laughs> keep going. Keep okay. coaching me. Yes. All right. Hey, obstacles, opportunities. So let us know. Again, if you're watching this live, uh, Facebook, it's Saturday just after lunchtime. Would love uh, some visitor interaction. If you're watching the YouTube, you can leave a comment as well. The podcast goes up on Thursday mornings mm -hmm. on my website. Uh, if you just want the audio version as you drive around, because who doesn't want to listen to us? You know, we should have, <laughs> drive do you know we should have put in there What's that? obstacles versus opportunities and expectations okay say more about that i think uh, i like that because i think uh, not just stay-at-home moms have this problem but like okay we'll just say like the opposite would be working dads yeah um and when you like if, like i don't want to say that kids are obstacles like that sounds bad. Like it sounds like they're right, they're in right, the way. Right, right. Um, and that's where that expectation goes in. Like if you like if you said if you want to blend the two, then you something has to give. Like your expectation has to change. Yeah. Of what things will look like, because I find myself having really like hard black and white pictures of like spending time and loving my children looks like this, and taking care of myself looks like this. Yeah. And yeah. investing in our future, our future that will impact our kids, you know, right? looks like this. Yeah. And I have a hard time blending that. And I feel like that kind of ties together somehow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, that maybe we carry around an expectation that life is neat and tidy. And it's not. Right? And maybe this gets back to, to last, last week's, week's. Yeah, I totally about that. About, you know, being able to, to experience work-life balance by yeah. starting with the big rocks that are important to us. Yeah. Both family and running right. are important to you. Right. And so your opportunity in front of you is to figure out how to blend both of those. And, and, and certainly as kids get older, that I think in lots of ways makes it easier. They can fend for themselves or they can go with you or something. Uh, uh, yeah, ideally, uh, I want them all with me. Yeah. 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 Even though it's a pain in the butt, I'm like, oh, gee, I wish I could be like, you know, when you have a moment to yourself and you go do it because it, it blends with your schedule of your day. I'm yeah. like, I am a little jealous. I am a little jealous. But when I like, if I bring it back, I just want to be with them. Yeah. Like, and that's me. That's, that's me. I know yeah. a lot, everyone can do that. That's just like innately built in me. It, it is. It is. Uh, so innately built into her, uh, little backstory into our life this week. So our dryer went out. Last Saturday, got a new one. Was delivered. Customer service guy was rude and terrible. I won't go into the details of why, but not a very professional sort of individual. <laughs> and I was telling somebody the story, and I said, "Now here's the problem. Like th th this has gotten back to me, and I now have to go home to a dryer that still doesn't work, and I now have to all spend Saturday after the podcast getting the dryer working." But here's the problem, I said. It's gotten back to me. Elise is the pretty one. She's the <laughs> hospitable one. Justin, you were so she's, pretty. She's you the welcoming so one. Uh, and above all, particularly in this situation, she's the nice one. <laughs> it's I, true. I am the muscle. And if the problem gets back to me, <laughs> I have a whole lot of tools in my tool bag on how to fix this. <laughs> so, this poor... Chap is going to be sorry that the problem got back to me because he's already bypassed the nice one. <laughs> right? Oh, man. It was so, so bad. I was like, I saw him walking out the door. I was like, Elise, say something. Say something. No. No, I can't. She's, 
She's too nice. Don't rock the boat. That's yeah. like my good cop, bad yeah. cop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like, so now this problem uh, mm -hmm. is not solved and has gotten back to me, and his his day is about to get a whole lot worse. No, I, so it's they, not. Don't so they called me. So they called me, and I was I was with a with a client. They said, "Hey, this is whatever. I don't even remember the name of the company." With the appliance delivery team, we would like to know your experience. <laughs> But don't worry, we will call back. I'm like, I, I can't wait for you to call back. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping I have my phone on me. If they call while we are doing the podcast, I will answer it live on air, and we'll we'll, we'll hash this out live. No, we won't. Facebook. No, I'll no, I will steal the phone and run in the bathroom and lock the door. <laughs> Obstacles versus opportunities, yeah. right? Okay, we'll circle this back on. Anyway, but like, right, like, even in silly, trivial ways, that dryer. Is is it an obstacle or is it an opportunity? Right, like, yeah, it's it's an opportunity for us certainly to extend grace to a guy that was not a very professional in his handlings with you. Well, okay, so there's um, our yeah. Well, there's our expectation. My expectation yeah. is that like, the, well, it's surprise. It's there in our way. Yeah. And instead of just like being angry about it, our expectation yeah. our our expectations of our afternoon and how we treat people. Um, that's change. Yeah. They have to change. Or, or I could say I have the opportunity oh. <laughs> <laughs> to lay down both some justice uh -huh. <laughs> and mercy. <laughs> well, see that one? I should have done mercy on that one because it's outside of the camera, so <laughs> nobody would have known. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. He's sleeping. <laughs> Checked some coffee and fell asleep. Yeah, I did. Lucky. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if you're watching this live, uh, please leave us a comment, let us know what you think obstacles versus opportunities, or if you have maybe a particular issue you want us to, to help you with, we're, we're clearly very good at arguing. <laughs> All right. This so, is how we usually like yeah. mesh things out, though. Like, you need someone this, to bounce things this, off this of. This should not come as a surprise, but we don't actually like pre-write this script. Usually about a day or two ahead of time, I say, we're talking about this on Saturday, think of something. <laughs> that, there's our level of planning on the podcast. But this is actually something we think about all the time. Like, right. Like, what about jumping over obstacles or getting over obstacles? And sometimes, like, we're resilient. People are resilient. Yeah. But how do you not become bitter mm -hmm. after you've come through an, an obstacle? Like, I, we sometimes we don't get unscathed. Like, if it's if yeah. someone's going through a divorce, no, if great. someone's going through, like, a divorce, like, that would be one of, like, the worst ones. Um, how do you not become bitter towards life in general and um, to have not, not to like kill your spirit? That's mm -hmm. like that would be a big big obstacle. That's not like laundry or dishes. That's right. an emotional obstacle. Yeah. Um, I suppose like my initial thought is to say m maybe two things. Number one. Back to an earlier point, you've literally made it to everything else. You've made it through everything else in life so far. Mm -hmm. So while this may not again be desirable or what you expected, there's no reason to think that you can't make it through this. Mm -hmm. Number two, I think we get can maybe I should I think we can get in trouble if we focus on the uh, immediacy of our situation. We can instead of focusing on the immediacy around us. Focus on something more long term. Okay. Um, hmm. Because again, I think that even begins to transform some of the obstacle versus opportunity stuff that we are dealing with. But I think, like you know, like so, divorce may be the perfect. I don't want to say, I don't say, I don't say the perfect, perfect example. example. Yeah. No. I, I, I think it's a it's a suitable example, right? It's because suitable, yeah. in in the immediacy, we're looking at the pain or the heartbreak or the un unmet expectations, right. uh, unexpressed desires. Um, yeah. Well, now I'm never going to have kids or what do we do with the kids since we've had them? You know, like mm -hmm. there's certainly all of those reins of emotions or, and feelings that are, that are all valid. I don't, I don't want to dismiss those. I don't want to say like, well, just get over it. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we need to feel. And I think you actually get in more trouble if you try to force yourself to not feel those things. Right. But I also think at, at the same time, and this is what will look different for everybody, while you are honoring those feelings, you also have to say, 
So where do I get the sense of my life is is charting now? Let's start to uh, let's start to put put some closing thoughts on this okay. because uh, certainly we could continue to talk on this, and actually we we will. So maybe I'll just I'll peel back the, the curtain a little bit. Um, we are going to start creating a focus every single week that the Next Steps community engages in. Right, mm-hmm. last week it was work life balance. Mm-hmm. So you can go watch the live stream from last. It was actually on Sunday last week. Um, you can go to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, just look for Next Steps Coaching. There on Thursday, I actually put out uh, a video on work-life balance as it relates to stress in life. Because mm-hmm. uh, I read a report, I don't know if I told you this, but Bakersfield is, according to one report, like the sixth most stressed city in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, of all of the dang construction that's going on in Bakersfield. And there's a lot of it. Uh, anyway, so like last week was all about work-life balance. So we talked on the live stream and on the podcast on... Uh, Sunday about work-life balance. I did a blog on it on Monday, did some uh, Instagram posts and Instagram stories. So we're going to start creating themes around each week so that you as the Next Steps community actually have time to engage in this and more than just like a quick one-off, hey, we post a podcast, we're done and on to the next topic, but I actually want to give the community a chance to experience some feedback. So the podcast is going to start going up live stream on Saturday. YouTube video will be posted later today. Uh, nothing on Sunday. Monday will always be a blog, so if you're not subscribed to justinhebert.com, uh, go do that. Actually, now is a great time to do it. I just released um, a five-part e-course on work-life balance and stress that you can actually get just by visiting my website, so go go be sure to sign up for that. And then throughout the week, we'll be doing Instagram, YouTube, mm-hmm. Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So community, continue to think of ways between Saturday and next Thursday when I'll announce the next topic uh, of ways that opportunity and obstacles really matter and and things that you have had to overcome. Leave leave a comment here or on any of the channels that you're following me on because I want to make sure that we are actually building a a resource and a network and a community where people can experience this feedback. So with that, uh, let's transition to some closing thoughts. Um, First of all, for me, I would say the number one thing that we have to remember, and and I've said this a couple of times, is the mindset that we have already made it through everything that life has had to offer. You know, maybe not perfect, maybe not necessarily what we expected, Mm -hmm. but grit is developed when we are faced with a circumstance in our life and choose to keep pressing on and moving forward anyway. Okay. If we, hey, this is hard, this is not what I expected, this is something that's a little bit scary to me, and yet I'm going to do it. So as you continue to make your way through life and think of areas in your life, maybe it's dealing with a coworker, uh, a boss, an employee, uh, a customer, you know, whatever it is that, that, that you yourself do, your circumstance may be the same, but it is your mindset that is going to determine the outcome. And that's really where I think I ha- I'm starting to, to shift a lot of my thinking and a lot of the work that I'm doing with my clients. I can't necessarily change the circumstance that you find yourself in, but I can change the way that you're going to think about the problem. I can change the way you're going to try to choose to attack it. I can change the way you're going to try to bring about a resolution. And I think that really begins to shift the focus from this is an obstacle, something I, I have no control over, to an opportunity. I may not necessarily know how to fix it right this second, but I also unwaveringly believe that I know that I can figure out how to solve it and I will get through this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some closing thoughts from you, my dear. (sighs) Well, as you were talking, I just thought about every single thing that we have to do today. And I just like- It's a really long list. It's a really long list. Yeah, yeah. but I want to be okay. I want to be okay with what the obstacles are. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that's honestly my own, uh, it's, it's like sleepiness or tiredness, like, and, um, and I get frustrated with myself that I'm like, Oh, I'm tired again. I can't get anything done. And yeah. it's another obstacle. And I want to have grace with myself. Yeah. I want to have, um, yeah, because certainly like shaming myself is not helpful either. Right. 
Well, you know, any, anyone there, not that we have, have time to, to dive into this, but I think that ends up working, uh, might be something that we explore here since we have a week to explore this topic, something like sleep. Like in my head, the difference maybe at, at a bedrock issue is an obstacle is truly something that I have very little control over. Okay. And an opportunity is something that may be hard, may be difficult, may be unexpected, but I can still influence the outcome of. Mm -hmm. So maybe something like sleep is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. If I slept terrible last night because the kids kept us awake or somebody's car alarm kept going off or, you know, like whatever, mm -hmm. and I only got two and a half hours of sleep, that's probably a legitimate obstacle that I, I, I just, I can't lay down at 11 a.m. and sleep till 4 p.m. Right. To, to reset myself. Right. So that's maybe a legitimate <sighs> obstacle mm -hmm. that I just, I can't see the, the bright side too, right? Mm -hmm. If an opportunity is, oh, here's the bright side to this. I don't know if there's a bright side to being sleep deprived. Right. I don't know if there's a bright side to being tired and getting a headache and all of those sorts of other cognitive disadvantages that a lack of sleep brings us to. Right. So maybe we'll, we'll explore that idea of what an obstacle, what a true obstacle looks like mm -hmm. and what the opportunity that lies in if we can reframe it. And ultimately something like a lack of sleep is an obstacle. Mm -hmm. And yet we've still got to find some sort of way to function even with genuine obstacles in our life, right? Obstacles don't mean we can just stop. Right. We have to find creative solutions. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, you're so smart. We will, we will start uh, shifting our focus towards that because I really think that has potential for great fruitful discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to wrap up the podcast with that. Thanks for joining us on the live stream. Uh, thank you for watching the YouTube video. Please like, share, and subscribe to either this page if you're watching it live or uh, if you're catching this on replay on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe there. Leave a comment on any of these social media platforms. If you're on YouTube, hit that bell notification so you know every time I post a new video, we're doing at least one a week, but I try for two to three. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at JS Hebert. You're still on Twitter? Technically, yes. Okay. It's more like a refeed for a lot of this stuff. Uh, Facebook is Jay Hebert Coaching. You can find me on YouTube at Next Steps Coaching. Um, can, new... I, can I say one thing? Yeah, absolutely. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Monday is lucky number 13. Lucky number 13. Lucky number 13 for us on Monday. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, that will conclude today's podcast. Be sure to check for the least release of this on YouTube. It will go live on the blog, justinheber.com on Thursday. New blog post every Monday along with all of the other social media platforms I've already mentioned. But I'm Justin. And I'm Elise. This is my co-host, Elise. This is the Leader Quest podcast. This has been episode four. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time.